Qualifying for the Hungarian Grand Prix is over and in a rain affected session filled with chaos it was Lando Norris in the McLaren who took pole position. But what did we learn? Well in today's video I'm going to be taking a look at the data and doing a data analysis from qualifying. If you enjoy the video then please hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now let's get into the video. As usual I'll be talking about the top teams later on so please do stick around for that. Yes, qualifying is over, and in a dramatic session, McLaren made it their first front row lockout since 2012, with Norris on pole position and Oscar Piastri alongside him. During the session though, there was two big incidents. Firstly with Sergio Perez in Q1, and then Yuki Tsunoda in Q3 launched into the air and hit the barrier. As I mentioned, there was rain and this really messed with the times that the drivers were able to set, which you can see here when you look at the lap times that Lando Norris set during qualifying. You can see that there is a bigger discrepancy than usual between the laps. So let's compare then the first lap from Q1 to his fastest lap from qualifying to see how the circuit conditions changed. Immediately when you look at these two laps, you can see that there is a massive difference when it comes to the levels of grip on the track for Norris in Q1 because he is massively slower in all of the corners compared to Q3. For example, here at the top of the hill in Q3, Norris carried a lot more speed. How much more? Well, it was 23 kilometers per hour, showing just how much more grip he had towards the end of qualifying. Also at turn three, which in the dry is not really a corner anymore, you can see that in Q1, Norris actually had to back off a little bit as the circuit was still a little bit damp and grip was not as high as what it usually is. Then going through the final couple of corners, Norris has significantly more grip and can get back to power a lot sooner. In sector three alone, Norris gained over nine tenths of a second. Overall, from Q1 to Q3, Norris's lap times improved by two and a half seconds. So we've seen the insane rate of lap time improvement from the start of qualifying until the end, but let's now take a look at the top speed that the teams were able to reach, and what can we see when we look at these top speeds? Well, one thing that is very clear is that Haas, who usually are fastest in a straight line, were absolute rockets in a straight line, as they had over 7 kilometers per hour on the next fastest team. The second Haas car was also a rocket in the straight line, as they were 5 kilometers per hour faster than anyone else. The slowest car in a straight line, coincidentally, was the fastest car around the circuit, which was McLaren, as they were only able to reach a top speed of 313 kilometers per hour. The reason that I think they were so slow is because I do think they were running a little bit more downforce than the rest of the competition. In the race tomorrow, McLaren will need to get a jump and run away as quickly as possible because it looks like Red Bull, Ferrari and Mercedes are a fair bit faster in a straight line. So defending without DRS could be fairly tricky for the Papaya team. Although I do think they should be okay, especially with the corners at the Budapest circuit. So we've seen the top speeds, but now in the midfield then, what teams were looking good? Well, in a somewhat return to form in the midfield, the top midfield team was Aston Martin after a very tricky few races. They've managed to bounce back with their new upgrades, and Fernando Alonso will be starting the race in 7th place, and Lance Stroll will be starting just behind him in 8th place. Admittedly, they were helped by the fact that Sonoda crashed, and Ricardo didn't have favourable track conditions when he went to set his lap in Q3 but it does help put them in a solid position for the Grand Prix. In the race though, they need to ensure they can keep the ties alive. However, unfortunately for Aston Martin, they are the only team that looks like they will have to run a set of soft tyres during the race, which given the expected temperatures is not going to help them at all. I can see them possibly getting it out of the way very early on in the race as they want to get a good launch at the start of the race. I just want to say that if you are enjoying the video so far, then I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now though, let's get back to the video and let's talk about Mercedes. For Mercedes, it was a bit of a comeback to reality moment as George Russell was eliminated in the first part of qualifying due to not having enough fuel to set a final lap. And then Lewis Hamilton almost got eliminated in Q2, but got through and managed to qualify in 5th place. Let's now compare the lap times of Norris to Hamilton 
to see how Lewis lost six tenths of a second. At the beginning of the lap, Hamilton was actually the faster driver. The Mercedes was faster in a straight line as we saw early on. But the big difference where it swings back into Norris's favour is at the top of the hill, as Norris was able to carry 10 kilometres per hour more than Lewis Hamilton. Then at the tight chicane, Norris was 6 kilometres per hour faster, and from there it was advantage Norris, especially towards the end of the lap, where he was able to get great traction out of each corner. Altogether, this led to a lap time difference of 6 tenths of a second. In the race tomorrow, Mercedes will be hoping that the weather remains somewhat cool. If it is as warm as what it should be, then I can see tyre wear becoming an issue for the Mercedes team. Russell will be looking to recover and finish in the points, which should be very possible for him. As for Lewis Hamilton, he will be trying to consolidate a top 5 finish. For McLaren, it was a front row lockout as Lando Norris is on pole position and Oscar Piastri is alongside him in second place. Let's compare the times of the two drivers. And when you look at these two laps, you can see that actually Piastri had the edge and was ahead for the majority of the lap. At a lot of the apexes, Piastri is actually able to carry slightly more minimum apex speed than Lando Norris is. And for the majority of the lap, it's looking like he will be the driver on pole position. But then, when it comes to the final couple of corners, Norris was just able to keep the tyres alive and had a little bit more pace. With that, Norris secured pole position. In the race tomorrow, both Norris and Piastri are in a great position to win the race, but they will need to work together in order to ensure that they do beat Max Verstappen. Piastri will also need to make sure that he can keep the tyres alive in the warmer conditions. For Ferrari, today was a much better qualifying session than what we have seen recently as Carlos Sainz qualified in 4th place and Charles Leclerc was in 6th place. Leclerc was unable to set a final lap due to Ferrari keeping him in the pits too long, which could have cost him a potential 4th place today as he was ahead of Sainz and Hamilton after the first runs. Even so though, let's compare the lap times of Leclerc to Carlos Sainz to see how Leclerc lost out. And when you look at these laps, Sainz tends to get a much better exit out of each corner, probably down to actually having the slightly better circuit conditions. However, at the higher speed corners, Leclerc does close back the gap. If Leclerc got the chance to do an extra lap, then there is a chance that we could be seeing the two Ferraris side by side. But at least in the race tomorrow, Ferrari should easily be the third fastest car in warmer conditions as they are very good on their tyres. So I do expect to see Leclerc come past Lewis Hamilton at some point. Finally for Red Bull, it was a disaster for Perez as he crashed out in Q1 and once again will have to find himself trying to recover to score any points in the Grand Prix. Teammate Verstappen will be lining up in third place for the start of the race. Let's compare then the lap times of Verstappen to Lando Norris to see how Max missed out on pole position. In the first part of the lap, Verstappen actually has the edge. At the high speed corners, Verstappen is ahead. At the top of the hill, for example, Verstappen carries 7 kilometers per hour more than Lando Norris, which is kind of insane when you think about the fact that Norris was able to carry a lot more speed than Lewis Hamilton at that same corner. At this point in the lap, Verstappen is 3 tenths ahead of Lando Norris, but then when it comes to the slower corners at the end of the lap, Lando Norris closes back the gap and beats Verstappen by half a tenth of a second. In the race tomorrow, I expect it will be very close between McLaren and Red Bull. So with that in mind then, what are my final predictions for the Hungarian Grand Prix? Well, in P5, I'm going to go for Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari. P4 will be Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari. P3 will be Oscar Piastri in the McLaren. P2 will be Max Verstappen in the Red Bull. And I am going to go for Lando Norris to win the Hungarian Grand Prix. But those are my thoughts. The question is though, what do you guys think will happen? In the comment section down below, please do let me know. And as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.